Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Law of Attraction Roundtable. I'm your host, Gary Temple Bodley. And today we have a special guest, Cindy Edison. And Cindy is the channel of Joseph. And I found you on Instagram, which I just started doing Instagram. You did. And saw all your awesome quotes, which I see are behind you here, which yeah, is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I love how you do the quotes. And as I was reading those quotes, you know, in Instagram, if you do hashtag law of attraction, you get a whole bunch of, you know, positive thinking stuff. But when you see stuff that's really true, it like clicks, you know, you know what that is. Right. And so I looked at even the first post I ever saw, I go, okay, well, this is real here. And so I couldn't wait to get to, get to you and look you up and here you are. Well, thank so welcome. you. Appreciate that. Nice intro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay. So we don't know each other. We're just meeting for the first time. Yeah. And uh, we won't go into too much detail about our histories and stuff, but I love to know how this all got started for you and when it happened. Well, I'll make it short because it started actually in 2003, so I'll kind of sum it up. Um, had a crash like everybody else did in 2003, and all of a sudden I was um, foist into Christianity biblically. biblically and um, I was raised Catholic, so I didn't know anything about the Bible. I just knew to fear God. Right. And um, so this was a, a, a very welcomed but tenuous uh, introduction for me. But as soon as they took me in, taught me, I read the Bible in a three-year period, probably three or four times, they took me out. And I knew at one point that it was not the truth anymore. Um, I don't know what it was then, but it uh, took me out started uh, questioning and, and, you know, really testing everything that they had taught me, um, all came true. And then one day, you know, it's been so long, but one day I was in advertising for 35 years. I sat down to write a newspaper article and what was coming through my laptop was not what I had intended to write, but wow. was actually a Dear Cindy letter. And wow. seven, pages letter, I, seven pages later, I had made the connection and scared the crap out of me, frankly. I had no idea what was going on, but so intrigued. And from that, it just got more and more and, and um, just was talking conversations every day. I recorded them on my laptop. I've got three laptops full of conversations. I can see my whole progression. Um, jump forward to um, the Abraham years. They took me into Abraham probably in 2014, like, Esther kept popping up everywhere I looked. There was Esther, Esther, and I said, who is this woman? So they led me to the Abraham teachings, which I immediately fell in love with. I knew it was truth. Um, went into that like a bull. Um, and a couple of years later, um, I was talking to them and they said, we are Abraham. And I said, you know, okay, that was kind of strange for me. Um, but ultimately, and it's a bunch of story in there, but ultimately, um, I understood uh, through a visual that they gave me um, that it was the consciousness of Abraham. It was not the Abraham, but they gave me this visual, which was really cool. Um, when you go to Panama City Beach or you go to one of the resort beaches and they have those prop planes that fly in front of you with a big banner on the back. Yeah. And I saw this prop plane <laughs> flying in front of me and it said, set. Abraham and it was blank and I knew at the time that was us. Wow. So it wasn't until many months later when we wrote the first book um, when they signed the welcome letter Joseph. Yeah. And I said wow that's cool <laughs> and then everything changed. <laughs> wow. Do you also speak or is it all writing? No I do speak. Oh. I do channel them live. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we channel. Um, they're introducing me to a lot of new channeling techniques, which is really just focus on us. They've been telling me that for years. Um, just focus on us. I'm like, well, everybody else is doing this and everybody else. They said, don't worry about anybody else. Do what you do. You've been doing this for eons of time. Yeah. So now it's just a focus and a connection. I feel them right here all the time. I don't mm -hmm. know how you get it, but they're, they're behind me all the time. Uh huh. Yeah. And yeah. some of my speaking engagements, people have come up behind after it was over, and they said, I saw them behind you. I saw the colors. I saw them dancing. I, I saw them, all different translations of the color. Wow. So really exciting. Yeah, thank you. Wow. Yeah. And so is this what you're doing full time now? 
I am not, unfortunately, not yet. I <laughs> thought I would have been by now, but it's only me. And I've been asking them for help for a long time because it's a little overwhelming. There's a lot to do, yeah. you know? So they kept saying at the right time, at the right time, at the right times. So um, I work part-time for my brother, which is a really good gig. And, um, and I write and I talk to them and I counsel people, you know, I'm just, I'm just staying in alignment. They said the, the best thing you can do now is to stay in alignment, focus on your own alignment. So you're ready. Yeah. Right, right time. Now, did you, were you aware of any other channels when this was happening to you? Did you know what channeling was? I did. I uh, did. I was, I was drawn to it very early on, uh, to the psychics and to channels and everything after the whole Bible incident, I looked up and I said, I know you're not in this book. Right. And then they started bringing me to, every, the first book they brought me to was Conversations with God. Yeah. And then everyone after that was channeled work, uh, Course in Miracles, all of this stuff, channel, channel, channel. And I said, I got it, I got it, I got it. <laughs> I got it, that's who I am. So yeah. yeah, I was very aware, yeah. For me, I lost everything in the crash of 2008 and then, a good friend gave us the secret and I resonated with that right away and then was led to actually we we were looking for something to get into after the secret and then in our own library asking is was asking it is given was in our library that we had listened to before but never it didn't right move us right? right and so we listened to it again then over and over and over and then I guess that was 2010 or 11 maybe 11 we went to north to um, Asheville and was at the two-day Abraham event for that. But then I thought that I wasn't channeling then. It didn't come until 2013. But I thought that whole time, Esther was the only channel. I, and, and Seth, you know, because only through Esther did I know Seth. And then when I started channeling, um, I found Story Waters. And I had read um, Conversations with God before all this too, you know, but didn't really get it. Right. And, but you get it. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> you know, um, uh, babe, yeah. who wrote um, Outwitting the Devil? Napoleon Hill. So Napoleon Hill, you know, uh, Think and Grow Rich, right? That right. is channel. And, yeah. and uh, then there's another book called Outwitting the Devil. Have you seen that? No. So this, this is Napoleon Hill. Oh, Napoleon he, Hill. Yeah, he wrote it back in whatever, the 40s or 50s or whenever that was. And his wife said, you can't release this, you know, uh, until your death. And then he died. And she goes, I'm not releasing it until my death. And so the family re released it in like 2000, mid 2006, wow. five-ish. It's amazing. I'm going to look it up. Yeah. So now I know that channeling is a natural ability that everyone has. Yes. But it's like singing. Everyone can sing. But some, some people want to pursue it as a career, and some people want to pursue it as a hobby, and some people have a natural talent for it. But everyone can do it who wants yeah. to do it. And since I've been doing Joshua and all the things we do in Joshua, maybe 30 or 40 people in the Joshua community have become full-blown channels. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah. So I like talking to all the different channels that I find and... And it's really interesting. <clears throat> I was, I always have this, I make up this conversation I have with people and, and you know, it's like at first I was really resistant because I thought it was weird and I didn't <laughs> tell anyone. And I've been channeling since 2013. Well, I didn't even share anything about Joshua on my personal Facebook page until last year. It's kind of weird to get it out there, isn't it? Yeah. 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 And so now, though, when I, when I have this conversation I, I have with people who are, don't know channels, it's like what's really interesting is there's no contradictions in this six years work with Joshua from five books and all the, you know, yeah. podcasts and all the articles and all the written answers. But not only that, there's no contradiction with any channel either. It's right. all the same. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. it's yeah. all indifferent, but how it works is there's a stream of consciousness that is comprised of this intelligence plus our guides and supporters, plus everyone else who will ever listen to it, their guides and supporters. And it's coming through in a combination of, like in my case, Gary and the stream of consciousness, right. which is called Joshua. Right. 
So it's when that stream of consciousness is with Esther, it's called Abraham. When it's with you, it's called Joseph. When it's with Astrid Halverson, it's Laurel. You know, it's whoever, whatever it is. And it comes out in a nuanced way based on who you are. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All your experiences play into that. Yeah. And what you're interested in. Yeah. Right. right. So what interests you most about all of this? I have this um, innate, it is an, an innate um, desire to teach that there's something better, that you really do have control. And I get very passionate about it. I can feel them pushing me, you know, because there's so many miserable people. And I say, you just have to understand that you're in control. You have the perfect control of everything. And right. they go, no, well, but, and I just go, no. <laughs> you know, I just want to shake people sometime and go, no, it's supposed to be better. It's yeah. supposed to be better. So, so this, and all the information, you yeah. know. That's well, this, this points to this fascinating thing that your intention prior to your birth was to be a spiritual leader and teacher. Yes. I didn't realize, realize this about myself until last year. The first five years, I was a student of Joshua like everyone else. And then I realized I, Gary Bodley, am a spiritual leader and teacher. Right. And, you know, if you use the term light worker, those of us who are light workers, that's, sure. that's what we intended, right? right? And, but we don't realize it because we imagine the spiritual leader and teachers like Deepak Chopra or someone like that. And they're somehow different than we are. We have to come to realize that's who we truly are and that's our soul's purpose. And when we step into that, you know, of course, there's wobble in our, you know, fear and stuff about stepping out as that. But once you get over that, then everything starts clicking yeah. and really starts working. Yeah. And it's all about timing, too. I mean, especially now with this whole New Earth. I'm on the New Earth Committee, and I assume you are, too. So. No, I don't even know what that is. Ooh, wow. <laughs> the, new, the shift? That's why you're here right now. Right now in the space right here. Yeah. You, me, everybody else who's coming up right now. They're coming out of the woodwork to, to uh, assist in this shift. Yes. And this, this great consciousness expansion you know and that's why it's so exciting and you know I, I don't know if you've ever done like people call them past life we know they're not but in your soul journeys if you've ever done one of those before with you know somebody who does those i mean i don't but um just amazing stuff from our soul you know our soul's evolution and you'll find i guarantee you you will find that you have been there before yeah <laughs> I did it one time and it was a, uh, so what my vision or what happened in that hypnotic state was I came back as a American Indian chief. Nice. And so I was on a horse in full chief wow. stuff, oh. looking at my tribe that was at this base of the mountains. It looked like the Rocky mountains and everyone in the tribe had their purpose. So the, warrior had his purpose the hunter had his purpose the squaw had her purpose and the medicine man had his purpose you know and everyone was equal in that yes. and no one there was no hierarchy so right. the chief wasn't better than the right. baby you know it was all equal in this right. and it was just this great pride that i felt of this yeah. harmonious tribe yeah yeah, it's so, fabulous stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how the new earth, the new human, you know, we're creating this new human. Lee Carroll has been talking, do you know, I'm sure you know who Lee Carroll is, Cryon. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, he's been talking about the new human and Joseph's been talking about to me about that for a long time too, about how as we move into the new earth or new age, whatever you want to call it, you know, we're, we're dumping fear and we are changing. Of course, when our vibration changes, our body changes, you know, of course, it's a, it's a, a natural evolution of the body. So that's exactly how the new earth will inhabit. It's, it's the new human is by no hierarchy, just everybody has a role and everybody plays together nicely. Yeah, and it's <laughs> with the technology, it's really amazing because you can see from our perspective now that these institutions are totally breaking down. So first of all, the presidency is perfect, you know, People used to revere the presidency, and now they go, "This doesn't mean anything." You know, anyone could any anyone could get into this, and it doesn't matter. And just and, do a job, yeah. Go ahead. Yep. And just do a job, play a role. 
Yeah. yeah. And education is breaking apart. No one's going to, you know, all the turmoil in university, all right. the issues that we have with, you know, elementary and grade school and how you can educate yourself on YouTube now by focusing <laughs> on whatever scary. your passion. Yeah. Right. Right. And then AI is coming and I, I see this as it's going to replace every job. And in a hundred years, we're going to look back, people are going to look back and go, they're going to see working nine to five as a form of slavery. And they're not going to believe that people would trade their time right. for these things. And so what everyone's going to be doing <laughs> is like some form of teaching, you know, and they'll have, yeah. everyone's going to be teaching each other this stuff. Well, yeah, yeah we really are now by our example. Absolutely. You know, we teach by our example anyway. Only by our example. Right. And, yeah. we, and nobody really gets it. Yeah. Except those that are aware that they're teaching, you know, yeah. and they go, wait, what did I just say? You know? Yeah. So and right. even we don't get it all the time. It's interesting. That's right. You know? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> according to your awareness, you know, what you introduce into your awareness is what you can get. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so, as you, so Joshua talks about, you're here to explore. It's an exploration of self-discovery and you can discover who you're not or who you truly are. And as you shift to let go of all the bullshit of Western society standards and focus on feeling good and understanding who you truly are and letting go of your attachment to other people's opinions or to some level of being good or success yeah. and just focus on who you are, then your talents and attributes start to emerge in right. that and then you end up meeting people along the way who in my experience start lighting up to me right. you know and they're just coming from all areas and they're they're having experiences that i never even heard of before you know and so you're getting this broader education through all these other people coming in yeah it's really getting fascinating yeah, yeah. it is and um you know joseph started teaching about the aspects of the soul you know these books that they wrote first allow your soul to lead we're hyping up for the new human so we're talking about being connected right. you know to your to the consciousness that right. is your, we, we refer to it as the soul but that's that's exactly um what i have been experiencing too because the broader i expand my own awareness all this other stuff starts coming in and it's very natural Yep. You know, I might not be aware of it in my own life, but when I see somebody else um, experiencing something, oh, wow, that's really cool. That's something else now that I can see that I yes. couldn't see before, yes. you know? And, and so as they- It's sorry, like we're getting, we're getting led to yes. different ideas, opening yes. up our belief system so that we can pull in more. Yes, so, yeah. if you're in alignment. Yeah, yeah. alignment key right now. Uh, because everything's moving so fast and the energy is moving so fast and we've got this, you know, Joseph, uh, their vibration represents the vibration of the new earth and anybody who uh, knows anything about manifestation, uh, the expert that you are, uh, knows that everything is created in its non-vibrational, I mean, non-physical form first. Mm -hmm. And that's what they represent. And we can't manifest something in the physical until there is that component, which is the pureness of that vibration. You know, so they're representing that and that vibration, holy cow, that just exudes abundance, you know, everywhere you turn. I mean, it has to because there's no fear there. So there's right. no resistance. So right. everything there. Just fascinating. Yeah. So <clears throat> this idea of alignment uh, is becoming really powerful lately in that there's really two streams of consciousness that you can connect to. One is all the thoughts humans have ever thought before, which is a fear-based, lack-based stream of consciousness that we naturally hook into whenever we're, you know, in fear. So whenever one of our limiting beliefs is triggered, we dip into that and then we pull up an urge to change the conditions, sort of a control mechanism, based maybe on our survival instinct. And all the work that we're doing now is to leave that stream of consciousness behind and spend more time connecting to the stream of consciousness that's coming from source, our soul, our inner self. That is where all the brilliant ideas are, all the fun thoughts, all the inspiration comes from that. So alignment really is 
choosing a perspective over what's happening in your life that is aligned with your soul's perspective as all good, that there is no wrong. And Joshua's first words were, everything is right, there is no wrong anywhere in the universe. Is th that come up for you? Um, I, got, I got the audible voice uh, five times before I started channeling, actually. Um, it was a fascinating experience, but the, the first one that I remember was, there is no devil and there is no hell. Right. And that changed, you know, I was coming out of the Christian mode at that point, and I went, and I was kind of scared. Can I, should I really believe this? You know, yeah. but as soon as, as soon as that, as soon as you hear that voice, you know, you know, there's nothing else. So I felt immediate relief when I heard that. And all of a sudden, they started going like this with the fear, just take the fear out. And, you know, and, and it was, and then, of course, all the fear pops up and you go, that's not me, that's not me, that's not me. So they teach aspects so um, you can recognize fear, you know, because a lot of people, a lot of people still think when we say fear that we're talking about um, fear of doing something or the fear of, you know, a scary fear. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Everything that's not love is fear. Right. You know, if it's anger, it's fear. It's in that category. It's not from your soul, yeah. you know? Yeah. So yes, very similar, very similar description. Um, we would say it a little differently, but it's the same outcome. Just the, the same outcome. idea that fear is Joshua pointed all the time. You have the inspiration to call your mother, and you say, "I'll do that later." The "I do it later" is a control mechanism because you fear doing it right now, and the fear would be maybe she's busy or maybe she's going to talk about something that I want to talk about, or maybe she's going to criticize me, you know, but the inspiration is call your mother. And so when you don't act on that inspiration in the divine moment, then you're just succumbing to fear and you say, I'll do it later. Well, later is not that inspiration. It's, it's uh, something else. Right. And so it's always this putting off what we're inspired to do. It's always based on fear, but we don't recognize it as fear. We just think, well, that's practical. It's not practical to stop what I'm doing now and call my mother. But if you're getting that inspiration, that timing is perfect. Just you know? to do it, yeah. I've yeah. learned to pay attention to that inspiration pretty good, actually. Yeah. And that's Joshua, good. Yeah. Uh, Joshua calls that being a blended being. When you are only living in inspiration and nothing else matters except for that thing you're inspired to do. Yeah. Not, the, not the full manifestation of that idea, but just what you can do in the moment. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what we're, that's where we're going. Moment by moment. Trust, yeah. trust, 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 trust. Yeah. Um, it's interesting about this idea of the new earth. And, you know, if you, if you've listened to a lot of different things over the years, like the um, Mayan calendar and, and, you know, the coming of Jesus and all this stuff, you know, it's all about this time right now. It's all, coinciding with technological advances where we can communicate like we're doing right now so easily and we can broadcast this and we right. can have access to new ideas. And they always say that there's gonna be people who are going to, going to be really upset by it. And then there will be people who are able to move into it easily. Right. And those who are going to be in terror from this new thing, you can sort of see that's what's happening now. You know. Yes. Yeah. They told me, as a matter of fact, um, a couple months ago, they said, you're going to start to see the delineation of the two worlds. And we are seeing it. You know, it's not, it's, some people think, oh, the new earth is here and we can live on. No, 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 no. The new earth is here. Um, you know, Jesus said to me, uh, he was one of my first that I channeled. And he, uh -huh. uh, for many, uh, for many, he comes through for many because people are, are, you know, know him. We, we call him that, but it's the consciousness. It's the right. same consciousness. So um, he said to me uh, one time, very early on, he said, the second coming um, is here. Yeah. It's here. It's an individual movement first. It is, the, it is the releasing of fear that is first. And that's what we're in right now. And everybody's being given this great opportunity to release fear. That's why we as teachers are coming out of the woodwork because now it's time to stand up and be Wonder Woman, you know, stand up and say, you don't have to be that anymore. You don't have to live like that. Well, I was conditioned. Well, no, no. So it's a, it's definitely a shift in perspective. 
definitely. And we see it happening. We see it all happening. That conditioning is so intense though. I know, yeah. I know. Joshua has this thing where if you could take a day in your life when you're 10 years old and you could video, watch a video of the entire day, from the time you woke up to the time you went to sleep, you would see how many times you were told you were wrong or to be good, not right. to be bad, to do this, you know, to behave. Right. And that's just one day. Right. And I'll talk about 20 right. years of that, you know, yeah. and, then, and then, you, then you start to get your bosses and your peers telling you what to do. That's right. And in order to get that love that you think you need from others, right. you, you act inauthentically yeah. in order to placate them so they keep what you think is love coming to you. Right. And it's a form of control that can't work. Right. And you have no idea who you are. You have no idea who you are. And that there's a momentum that builds towards that. Right. And you can see people who are in their 20s who are exuberant and having fun and doing stuff. And, you know, and then by the time they're 70, they're living in an apartment with a cat. <laughs> not doing anything, you know, because <laughs> those limiting beliefs get stronger if you don't do something about them along the That's way. Right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm all about this dumping the fear stuff. And I counsel my friends and my family. Don't say that. Don't say that. What are you doing? What are you doing? What do you want to put that out there for? And they go, shut up. <laughs> you know, and I go, okay, you know, whatever. But yeah. I'm exampling the life, you know, I'm exampling for people and I, I'm sure it makes them annoyed. But once in a while, they'll come back and say, I caught myself yesterday saying this and doing this. And I remembered you and I heard you in my head. And I went, OK, that's the key. You know, that's the key to drop the seeds so somebody can do something differently. You know, so when did you come out of the closet as a channel to your friends and family? Oh, Boy, um, it was that night of the, I, I told my sister first, I called her up and I said, you can't believe what just happened. And she's like, yeah, really? Oh, that's cool. I got to go. You know, they don't get it. <laughs> they just don't get it. They're, they're scared of it. They don't understand it. And finally I said, look, this is just what some people would call a foreign language, but it is our most natural language. It's translation of vibration. That's what it is. Yeah. And we all know it and we all do it. I'm just conscious of it. You know, when did you write the first book that uh, they took me to the beach to write that book for a month. That was really great. Um, it was written in uh, took me two weeks between October, and November of 17, 17. And then uh, two, three and four came in the next couple months. What last year? What, what year? 17. Oh, 17. OK, 17. Yeah. yeah. 2017. OK, great. Yeah. Yeah. And I haven't, you know, it's a message. And they said, you know, this message is really for teachers because it's got to, you have to understand, you know, I sent it to 10 people when I first finished it. And I said, give me your, we don't want to edit. There's no editing. It takes like two weeks to write it. That's it. Right. No editing. Just tell me what you think. And invariably every single one of them said, I, it's really deep. I can't, you know. And I said, okay, put it down, pick it up in a year, you know. Yeah. And now I'm seeing, I'm starting to see, my friends are coming and saying, this is happening to me, what do you think? And I go, oh, go to book two and look at that, look at that scenario and Joseph will explain it to you, you know. Well, can't you just tell them to explain it now? Okay. So, yeah, so I'm seeing they were preparing. It's a background, it's a, a background series, short yeah. little series. What's so, the first book called? They're, all, they're the Allow Your Soul to Lead series. Uh -huh. And the first one is, which I kind of want to talk to you about, yeah. um, Experiencing the soul's perspective of the ego. Mm. Now, the ego, um, I want to touch on that if we can for a second. Absolutely. The ego, um, I've always known, and I've said for years before any of this started, that the ego really got a bad rap, and I never knew why I was saying that. But um, as we got into this material and they started teaching me about the aspects of the soul and the ego as being an aspect of the soul, if that is true, and of course it is, um, you know, I don't question Joseph much. They kind of laugh at me when I do, but so when they, when they say that the, the ego aspect is an aspect of the soul, that means that it is found in love and it has a purpose. Right. So ultimately through all of the teachings and it didn't take a long time for me to get that because I always understood there was something wrong there because when there is a teaching, I don't care what it is, when there, in my opinion, when there is a teaching of fear and there are many, 
you know, when there's a teaching of fear, it does not belong in the soul perspective. It's not part of the soul's perspective. It can't be. So when they say, okay, your ego is really your soul's um, partner in the third dimension where the fear exists because the soul doesn't get messed up with the fear. The soul is way above the fear. So the soul doesn't send us here. Or we don't choose to come here and say, well, we're just going to wing it because we don't, we're pure positive vibration when we come in. Right. So we have, so I pictured it when they were explaining it one day, I pictured it as me coming from that vibration in my red sports car and stopping to pick the ego up, my friend, the ego on my way into the, the third dimension. And so this is, this is uh, helpful. Um, they gave me this a while ago and I use this when I teach too. If you picture yourself sitting by the side of a river on the bank of a river and in that river flowing is every single thought vibration, every single thought, the good ones, the bad ones, the evil ones, every thought that's ever been thought, what you said before. And they're all floating. And I pictured them as balled up paper because before we had computers and you were back in that age, yeah. I was um, a writer and I was at a typewriter. And every time I was mad, I'd take it out and ball it up and throw it. So here I'm sitting in front of this river and all these pieces of paper and they're all different colors. And all the white ones, I imagined, were all the pure positive alignment thoughts. And so as we're sitting there, my soul is on my right, the ego aspect is on my left, and we're hanging out together, enjoying. So as the river is flowing in front of me, I'm choosing me, the human aspect, are choosing, I'm choosing my thoughts. And so it's my responsibility. So when I pick up a thought that's the white ball, the, my soul turns to me and high fives me and says, that's in alignment. Go right. with that. Conjure more of that. Right. But if I pick up a, you know, a bright red ball, the ego says, no, 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 throw that one back because this is how it's going to feel. And the ego gives me the opportunity to feel that out of alignment, negative emotion. Right. So all I need to do is throw it back and pick some, pick another vibration. Right. This is where our choosing ground is. Yeah. And so the ego offers the emotional side that the soul does not, which is the negative, fearful emotion. And the ego is trying to keep us in alignment by offering us, this is what it's going to feel like. And if you notice, when you choose those thoughts from, that are out of alignment, the manifestation, if you continue on that path and you continue to create that momentum by choosing out of alignment thoughts, and you, it will result in an out of alignment manifestation that we don't want. So the ego, in that sense, is our friend by helping us to stay in alignment, by offering us the choosing ground of alignment or not alignment. If it feels good, you're in alignment. If it doesn't feel good, it's not who you are. Absolutely. Throw it back. Yeah, that's great. And um, those unwanted manifestations, Joshua calls manifestation events. And yeah. when you feel negative emotion, because something has happened, your perspective is out of alignment. Your inner self exactly. sees this as a good thing. This yeah. is part of what's going to lead you to discover who you truly are, your soul's purpose, all that, or the manifestation of your, of your desires. And we see it as a bad thing. The only way we can see it as a bad thing is because we have a limiting belief. Exactly. And if we can instead not react to that event, but instead find the limiting belief, process that limiting belief, prove the limiting belief is false, and then choose a higher perspective. No, this is for me, you know. Why did I wake up late? You know, <clears throat> we all start the day looking at the clock and making a judgment of, did we wake up on time? Did we wake up too late? Did we sleep well, <laughs> you know? And very rarely, like only if it's absolutely perfect, we say, oh, good. But generally we're saying, oh, it's a minute too late or a minute too early or whatever. <laughs> That's how our whole day starts, you know? Yeah. And so this idea then, is to choose a perspective. Okay, I woke up 10 minutes late. That's interesting. I wonder how this will be for me. Let's see how it plays out before I make a decision that it's bad, you know. And or I would, I would, my perspective of that would be, well, I woke up 10 minutes late. Look at that. I slept for 10 more minutes. How wonderful. Yeah, and exactly. Just, but, you know, just choose something else because yeah. we're making it up as we go along. We're making it up. 
said to me the other day, conjure your own point of view, Cindy. Don't look at other people and try and say, well, they do it this way or they're doing it this way. It doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. Conjure your own point of view and then choose the thoughts that back that up and move right. forward. Yeah. yeah. Good. I want to add, I want to touch on something you said though that Joshua calls them uh, unwanted events manifestation or, events manifest yeah. well it's so funny because they have been Joseph has been saying to me for so long you have got to get out my words not there so much more eloquent than this but you got to get out of this linear time because you're not living there anymore you must you must do the moment by moment and understand that our evolution all evolution but our human collective evolution is based on events. It is not based on your clock. It's not based on your boss. It's not based on somebody wanting you to do something. It is the event. So when something doesn't happen when you think it should, or when you want it to, that doesn't mean it's not going to happen. You must stay in alignment. So when it's time, the event will happen that will move you in the new direction. Right. So the events, I love that they use events. Yeah. So it's an interesting thing because um, I, I see myself being guided along the way, all the experiences that I had last year, all the people that I met, all the things that I did were these events that came up. And so then um, what interesting thing happened, I started a course, it's called the boot camp that was channeled. And so we had a whole bunch of people through the first year in the boot camp. And one of those people on Dean Carrington started channeling her grandfather, um, Walter Carrington. And he was a, university researcher in the 30s and 40s in Cambridge, in England. And he was researching spirituality and telepathy. And he wrote three books about it. And, um, and anyway, so uh, she starts channeling him now, all out of the blue, never met him before. And she says, I need to talk to you about what's going on here. And then she says that, that you've, you've written all the books, that's fine. You've done the boot camp, you've got this thing going, but you're going to ex you know, get more and more relevant and you need to embrace social media and Instagram. And so I go on Instagram for the first time and then I meet, see your post and then meet you and then here you are. It's yeah. just this amazing thing at the perfect timing. Yeah. Exactly, that's exactly yeah. right. That's exactly yeah. right. That's how everything happens and you know, like I do, you can tell when I when I when I saw your first comment on one of their posts, I went, "This guy is doing something." And I and I went to your Instagram thing, and I went, "Okay, he just started." I knew you just started because yeah. it's you know we're out there a little bit when Instagram you know Instagram is concerned. But when I went to your site and I went, "Holy cow, look what he's doing! That's awesome!" So I knew at that point I knew that we were supposed to meet because right. we are we are the same consciousness where yeah. our souls are there <laughs> yeah okay so uh i started channeling the first book the first thing i ever did was was meditating in that summer of 2013 joshua came through it was a lot of doubt in there but i kept playing with it i started asking this presence questions i could feel it in my face and they said and then one day i said who is this they said we are joshua and i'm like okay sure whatever and kept playing with it and playing with it and playing with it. And then in November 15th, 2013, they said, get up and go right, right, right. So I get up to my computer and that first day wrote the, in half an hour, the introduction to the first book. Yep. And then every day for eight weeks it came out. So then it evolved in this thing that took off on a life of its own. Um, and it's just so interesting how it came out of nowhere you know, it seemingly came out of nowhere. Right. And so, but it's gone now where I'm doing events and being on cruises and inviting other places. What, and that just seemed natural, but you know, I was always a speaker and I was always comfortable on stage yeah. and I always enjoyed being around people. So this community is really fun to be with. And, and so that was all part of it, but it's, you know, where are you in your stage of this evolution? Well, they're, they're nudging me, but I, I, um, I thought I would have been a lot further along than I am in the coming out. And they, they're telling me all the time, it's timing, 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 Cindy. Yeah. Just, I, I don't really promote the books. Um, I, I post them sometimes from time to time, 
um, but I don't really promote them. I've had some groups on a regular basis. I had them uh, last year, every month, small groups, maybe 15, 20 people, maybe. Um, but when I go to a place where they don't know me, um, it's maybe five or six or seven, um, and they're amazed and they're asking great questions. Yeah. I'm find, I was finding it very difficult in the beginning to get bookings. People, I would, you know, to the spiritual community, and thank God you're not one of them, but I was very put off because I, I felt like I had this, just like you, I had this great information. I have all this information that can really help. How come people don't want to help to get it out there? I don't understand, you know. That's and that, yeah, you know? it's that old dynamic of, of I have to protect my whatever brand exactly. or, you know. Exactly. Yeah. And I got a little annoyed with it. And um, I would, you know, I would get responses from these internet radio things, the soul stuff. And I was like, it's a perfect place for me. And nine out of 10 would say, they don't want, they don't care about the message. They would say, how many followers do you have? How many email addresses do you have? And I said, you know what? I'm just starting, but I have people that need to hear this. Well, come back when you have 1500. And I'm like, forget it. You know, and I got very discouraged early on. Yeah. And they said, at the right time, at the right time. So I'm in alignment. <laughs> yeah, I could. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, do you ever receive inspiration and say, yeah, I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm not going to do that. Do no. You, you do whatever uh, you're inspired to do. Actually, I got this big inspiration about doing uh, YouTube videos to teach this stuff. And, yeah. I was, and I knew what it was. And I set the whole thing up. And um, I, start, I did one or two. And all of a sudden, it just stopped. And I said, okay, I'm not supposed to do it yet. And they told me probably two months after that, they said the inspiration was certainly there, but it will be for the next book. So we wanted you to go through the process. <laughs> so I said, okay, you know, so I've got some, you know, I haven't done anything like in a while because I'm waiting for the inspiration, yeah. you know, you, allowing yeah. the inspiration. And you got to, so there's the interesting thing about inspiration because one, it has to be fun and interesting while you're doing it. Yeah. Like this right now. Oh. It's just so natural and so fun yeah. and so easy, you know. Yeah. And yeah. so these podcasts are always fun and always easy yeah. and time goes by like that. And yet you'll come to a point where you'll say, you know, maybe I should be doing something else or these little doubts and fears come in. Yeah. You just got to go back and remember, no, this is fun. It doesn't mean anything. The numbers don't mean anything. Right. It's just this momentum that you're building by continuing with whatever that passion is, whatever that interest is right, right there. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. but you know, for me, the first five years of Joshua, I literally spent an hour a day and that hour a day built up a, a foundation. And then when I was ready to step in, I had this really strong inspiration to buy a house where we could have these Joshua events. And this was in 2018. So I'm online looking for a house somewhere in the South. I was looking in Georgia, South Carolina, Savannah, Charleston, uh, all over North Carolina. Yeah. And I was looking at like bed and breakfasts that had five bedrooms or six bedrooms. And then I find this bed and breakfast in this town, Newton. And I'm looking at that and it seemed really good. It was perfect and the town's really cute. And then I look on there and there's this other house right down the street from it. My price range is like 500,000. This house was 112. So I buy this house that day, full price, wow. sight unseen. But you and, knew. and I, well, I didn't really know because I thought, okay, I don't know why I bought it, but if it doesn't turn out good, I'll just cancel the contract and lose the deposit. And so I go and look at all these other houses all over the South on the way up here, end up at this house, come into it, it had been abandoned for seven years. And I look at it and go, this has got the best bones of any of these houses. They all need work anyway. And I go upstairs and then I go down this back staircase that opens up into the kitchen. I'm like, oh my God, this was in my dreams, my sleeping dreams for the last 25 years. I had no idea what this was. And so, so now I'm moving up here and I was in real estate and I was a professional poker player in Florida. I was oh, wow. a mile from the biggest poker room in the country. And here I come here, there's nothing, no real estate. I'm not licensed. There's no poker up here. I'm like, what am I going to do now? And then it just all led perfectly. Yeah, you know? perfect. So Love it's just working on this, you know, being 
you know, and it's like this evolution that just is going to take time. But what is going to happen is that you're going to understand that you're a spiritual leader and teacher. And that doesn't mean anything great. It doesn't mean you're good. It just right. means this is what you came to do. Yep. And so many people, this is what they came to do. Yet the illusion that they can't be that or who are they to be that right. keeps you apart from it, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't pay attention to that. I don't care anymore. Yeah. I don't care Good. anymore. I out myself all the time. I don't care. You know, because it's such a, I figured a long time ago, well, if I'm going to act like it's weird, then why would anybody believe, you know? So I'm just going to be me. And right. that will that will get those people that aren't around, that aren't with me away from me. And the, yeah. you know, they vibrate out anyway, you know, you vibrate at a higher level, you get the people that are vibrating at that level too. I don't mean higher, I mean more expanded, you know? Right. Yeah. And thank God we didn't discover this when we were 20, you know, <laughs> in a different century. They're so smart. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been so weird, you know. Timing, 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 timing. Yeah. The event, the event, the event. Yeah. I say, yeah, I know, but it's been, God, it's in 2003. Holy mackerel, that's a long time. It's a long time. 17. Yeah, but there was like this, you had to get a foundation going, whatever that took. And you had to move along a timeline, interacting between your old life and the new life. I was just thinking this morning in the shower that... The matrix really is when you get out of the matrix, you're still in the matrix. You know, you just are That's aware right. that it's the matrix. That's right. You don't go into this cave somewhere without right. any food and everything. You still get to enjoy all that's right. here, but now you're not attached to it. Right. Exactly. And it doesn't, and then it's more enjoyable, you know, because I don't care. Yeah. And when I say I don't care, I don't mean I don't care. I mean, it doesn't, you know, there's so much more. There's just so much more. That's, that feels better. Well, I have to say that term, I don't care, is the most important term. And it goes against the grain of control in the standards Western society. You're supposed to care because people want you to care because right. that way they can control you. Right. By, by making caring be important to you so that you'll right. do what they need you to do. When you don't care, it just means you don't have attachment to whatever that is right. on you. And then you're just allowing your ego. See, if your belief system is malleable enough, especially about yourself, then your ego doesn't have to defend it. Well, you that's know? right. Then the ego is playing with you. Right. You know? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and as now, I may come up off sort of arrogant and cocky. And, but that's just because I'm passionate about what I'm talking about. Yeah. And I really understand it because I've been really focused on this for six years. And, and Abraham intensely before that. Yes. And I have a passion for talking and sharing this information. But in order to be a clear channel, you have to understand that it's nothing to do with Gary Temple Bodley. It's all about what That's this right. information is. That's yeah. right. Yeah. It's the message. It's the message. It's the message. Yeah. Oh my God. Yes. It's yeah. And I'm, I'm, you know, I was really disappointed in the beginning when all this started and the social media, I'm not a social media person at all. And I was like, you know, I don't really, uh, it doesn't, it, it doesn't mean anything to me because it doesn't mean anything to most of the people that are on it. Yeah. But, you know, and, and, and I said, you know, I'm just disappointed. And they said, they're a whole nother animal, Cindy. They're a whole, it's not your, it's not your audience. It's not our audience. They're not going to hear us even if they were listening, they, they're not going to hear us. And right. I changed my perspective. And I said, okay, so it's just. Well, it's absolutely truth. If this is an, you know, an attractive universe and we attract by our vibration, right. then when we get clear on who we are and what we're doing, we'll be inspired to do things that will attract people. And people will just come from nowhere. In, we were just, I've had two podcasts going on. One is Joshua Live. So Joshua is, I'm channeling Joshua to a group of people on Zoom like this. And we record that and post it and Joshua Live. And then I've been doing this, the Law of Attraction Roundtable for four years and just discussing this stuff. So that we were really, flat, you know, the same all the time. You know, the same amount of downloads, the same amount of listeners. And then November last year, it went up three times in one month. Wow. And then wow. it went up every month after that. And so wow. now it's 10 times what it was for no reason, I didn't do anything differently at all. Timing, 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 they're saying. It's all yeah. about the timing, of course. Yeah. 
when you're talking to me now, are you also receiving Joseph? Yeah, they're, yeah. yeah I always know they're here. They, they've been batting it in my head for a long time. They, they chime in. Um, about a year ago, they, and I won't get off on a tangent because I know you want to go someplace with this, but um, they told me about a year ago, they said, you know, we are blending our, our, our vibrations. We're in a constant blending mode. So if you will just know that we're always here and every single time, and I've got thousands of them, every single time I've written with them in conversation, that's how they start. We are always here. We are always here. You may begin. We are here. We are here. We are. You know, and then they start to tell me, it's your soul. It's your soul. You, your soul is here with us. Yeah. You know, if you want to call it us. Yeah. Your soul is part of this consciousness. So it's Absolutely. A, yeah. You know, it's a shift of that perspective, um, of the human perspective. But you know that. So yes, yes. Yeah. It's, you know, I keep it sort of separate. Except that when I'm having what I call spiritual conversations like this one right now, I do feel that I'm spiritually connected to you in this moment. And so I prepare nothing for these conversations because right. it's all the ideas are flowing to me. Right. And if you want to call that Joseph, I mean, or Joshua, or the stream of consciousness of love, yeah. in that flow state, there's no hesitation. I know what to talk about. And it's like the conversation's being guided not just for us, but primarily for us, but also for all the people who have ever listened to this as well. Right, you know? that's right. Yeah. That's right. And then this technology, this idea of getting into a flow state before any conversation, setting your intentions, and getting out of the wobble of what might be there. Like, you might have this desire for the other person to think highly of you, you know? You might care what they think. And so in, if it looks like they don't, aren't agreeing with you or they don't care what you think or they're not liking you, you're going to dip down into that fear-based consciousness, pull up one of those red crumpled up balls <laughs> and, and have an urge to guide this conversation so that they'll like you. <laughs> and that's being inauthentic. Or if you had an attachment to the outcome of the conversation, you know, so you get clear up all that and say, I'm just going to have fun. I don't care I'm, at all. I'm past all that. I'm past all that. Now yeah, you're I'm in that stream of consciousness and you're receiving all these great ideas. Yeah. And that can be with anyone, you know, yeah, all the it time. It is with everyone. Yeah. It's with everyone. I take every opportunity I can. <laughs> yeah. It's just part, it's just who I am now. Yeah. You know, just. And, okay, so I don't have, I'm in a relationship, but I don't have any kids. Do you have kids married? I have no, time? I have no children. Um, I had been married three times, uh -huh. all from that other consciousness, all yeah. from that other vibration when I was a doormat. And, um, and so, no, now I'm not in a relationship except only with Joseph, you know, and they tell me he's, you know, he's in this vibration. So we'll see, yeah. we'll see, but yeah, I'm a free bird. And, you know, I, um, and I love it. I love, I'm 58. Um, I have no ties. I mean, I know they set this up on purpose because they're always saying, you got to be ready to go on a moment's notice, ready to go, ready to go, ready to go. It's about to explode, they say. Yeah. You know, so I'm ready to go. I rent a condo. I'm not tied down to anything on purpose. You know, my brother, God rest him, he's an angel here for me and has been, you know, has been gracious enough to, I've been working for him part-time now for the last two years so I could do more of this yeah. um, for like nine years, yeah. you know, so it's been great. So I'm just kind of, I say waiting, they say, Cindy, you're allowing, you're allowing the timing to, to match up, you know, it's vibrational agreement. And yeah. so yeah, I'm sure you saw that last quote that I did on, um, on Instagram about the resonation. I thought that was great when they said that, but you said something earlier that made me think about that, about this conversation and about being something resonating. You said something about Abraham and, and when, when a message resonates with you, it's in vibrational agreement. And of course we are in vibrational agreement now because we're talking about the same consciousness. Absolutely, and I think that our lives are interesting too because this happened when I turned 50. And that with all the people that I work with, that 50 year old is the sweet spot. If you would do a bell curve, the right in the middle is this 50. And yeah. then most of the people are in their you know, 40s or 50s, I just turned 57, you know, uh, and it's yeah. like, you have to live a cheese grater existence <laughs> or a hamster wheel existence to realize that doesn't work, you know, yeah. uh, in order Not to come this. to this. Yeah. Not and, and, you know, it really started in, in America, North America, 
So this whole law of attraction, spirituality, consciousness of this, of this new approach to life yeah. is gaining, you know, started here and it's getting here. But now you're seeing England is really blowing up. France is really blowing up. The Northwestern Europe is very popular. Australia, you know, and it's getting more and more and more. And so, so many people are questioning if we cut out, there's this big lightning storm here. Oh, wow. Power, I heard but, we're pouring. It's pouring here too. I can hear it. Yeah. So it's so cool to be here now and to embrace each other, all of us who are teachers. Yeah. And know that we're on the same team. You know? Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. we're lifting. I feel like I'm lifting all the time, lifting. And they say, no, you're light. It's just your light. It's your light. But yeah. we're going to be global, of course. I mean, look at we're, look what Abraham's done, first of all. And look what they're doing to pave the way. I really think that they are the, the way showers for us. Absolutely. And then we for those you know behind us or coming later. But um, yeah, I, I, I totally agree that, that there is so much call for it now. And of course there is, because there's so much light coming in, you know, and we're the ones that are grabbing it, you know, yeah. or, or showing it, or, you know, they say your light is needed, you're needed, you're needed. Okay, well, put me someplace then and let me shine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always wondered how come I never had kids. And it's like, imagine you turn 50 and your kids are in their 20s, and then you become a channel and you have to explain it to them, you know? I can't, I can't imagine. Okay, I'm not going to do it, right? <laughs> oh, my God. I can't imagine. I have two nephews and a niece, and that's enough for me. Right, yeah. That's enough for me. I, I watch them, and I go, thank God I'm not their parents, you know? And they're good kids, but I wouldn't want to be going through it now. Yeah. yeah. No. It's so interesting. I have so many friends, too, that don't have kids at all. Oh, wow, it's like, cool. isn't that weird? All, this, all these people from high school don't, never had kids. It's wow. like, yeah, it's like that whole idea is like you need kids to be happy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And of course, that's that's open to however it turns out, you know. Right. But whether you're happy or not, there's certainly great teachers, you know. Yeah. But the thing is to control your happiness, you have to have children. Well, you don't now that no longer applies. You can choose right. what you want to do. You know? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Free. Okay. So if you took a look at all the stuff that Joseph teaches my well, and I look at all the stuff Joshua teaches. The thing that I like talking about the most is raising children, which is ironic having no children, you know, education, yeah. raising children, how you interact with kids, how do you allow them to be who they I are? You said that, yeah, yeah. And um, I see my friends now who have little kids, and it seems like and this is probably just the evolution of childhood in general, is that the parents are even in more control and they're smoothing out all the kids' manifestation events for them so that they don't have any challenges or obstacles to face. And in doing that, they, you know, they're not developing this resiliency that, that is important. You know? yep. yeah. And then they'll be facing these manifestation events later. And then the school system... I think, oh my God, I don't even know if I want to come back as another life and have to go through that school system again. <laughs> <laughs> you won't. I know. Won't. It'll be done by then, right? You won't, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's all. You'll be on a whole different planet by then. Yeah. What's your favorite subject? Well, I'm big into the kids too. It's funny you should say that because I used to think the same thing, had no kids, but I'm like, you know, what are you doing to this kid? <laughs> um, and I thought the same thing always about if, they, if we could start teaching the children at a very young age who they are, not us teaching them, but let, let them understand who they are at yeah. a young age and prepare them for what is to come instead of shielding them. You know, they'll start out, they're already a higher vibration. Right. So instead of, you know, instead of cutting that down and limiting that, expand it from a very young age and big into that. And Joseph has, uh, Joseph has told me on a couple of occasions, we will be writing children's books. I can't wait for that. Uh, um, but sure. that and, and the choosing, um, we're big into the choosing, uh, choosing thoughts, choosing vibrations, understanding vibration, understanding that we are in a choosing based universe and how important it is to know that. That's a big thing for me. Yeah, um, I read that last, one of the recent posts was about choice. Yeah. In fact, I may have, I'm doing this thing called clarity cards where I take a word and then channel Joshua's. Oh, nice 
description of that word. Yeah. And I added choice to that oh, list good. because of oh, the, that post you had. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Good. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. And we're going to do a book. In fact, it's, they said do it whenever you want of all these quotes and the explanation behind, you know, with a page of explanation behind them, which would be one of my favorite things. They came out with these, with the first book, actually. So, um, yeah, I'd have to say what that is. And I think we're going to, I think this next book will be um, about our fitting in, uh, our, our, um, us as vibrational beings fitting into the universal vibrational truths. They're calling them the universal truths, not laws, because laws uh, implies limitation and you got to do it my way and I'm controlling you and it's a law. Yeah. So they're saying these aren't laws, these are truths. They just are. They just oh, are. I like that. And, yeah. and teaching um, about how to uh, use the, the universal truths, just what you're teaching. That the, you know, trying to under, they're trying to make people under, my words, not theirs. We're, they say we're not trying to make anything, Cindy. Okay, right. um, <laughs> but they're they they want to expose more about how to live within the universal vibration because that's what we're here for, you know. And once we do that, we expand that because it's all love. So right. we, once when we're doing that, we're expanding it, and the collective just gets brighter and brighter. Yeah, you know. So I think that's where we're going next um, with the new. The new vibration that's available and how do we how do we you know use this thing and live on the new earth did you self self-publish your books i did did you ever try going to an to a publishing house i did i tried everything yeah. you know it's like yeah. this they just go like this i had a literary literary agent and went to hay house and I that's the only place i was interested in going right hay exactly. house and i think and they said, no channels. We don't do channels here. You know? Right. Yeah. Like, okay. I was blown away. There is a vibrational inconsistency there, you know? Huge. <laughs> Huge. Yeah. And they're not the only ones. Yeah. And, yeah. Then, and then Joshua said, you don't need that. This right. is a new earth, right? That's this right. This is a new paradigm. That's the right. The whole reason this awakening is happening is because there are fewer gatekeepers. The gatekeepers yes. don't apply anymore. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it doesn't matter who the public, the people that are that are going to be drawn to our work or our message. It, it doesn't matter who the publisher is. You know, there was no. one publisher that I wanted, and I wanted that one. And I had a I had a literary agent for about two weeks until she told me what she wanted to do, which was change everything. And I said, No, bye, see ya. <laughs> so then I started to feel a little overwhelmed because I'm like, Oh shit, I got to do this by myself now. Yeah. And you know, it's a lot of figuring out and stuff. So I'm waiting for my help to come. So, um, yeah, but they, they promised, they said, of course, you know, of course it will. I mean, they keep saying, Cindy, we know what we're doing. I guess, yeah. You know, yeah. you know, so they're fun. But that is the, the one thing that is difficult is this patience idea. You know? <laughs> Especially to us who are doers. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 It's like, really live life today yeah. and just do whatever you're inspired to do today and tomorrow will take care of itself. That's right. You know? That's right. Um, so I have this, this idea, thanks to um, Undine who channeled Walter, is that I'll be moving to California at some point. We're, you and I are the only ch channels not living in California, by the way. Yeah, I know. They're and I almost there. went out there last year. I almost yeah. went out there last year. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so. It's it was, lopsided. It was, it was, it's what? It's lopsided. We got to stay over here. We do. I mean, I think of my beautiful house here, my beautiful little town, no traffic. No Everyone's traffic. like super real here, you know? No crazy people, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Woo! but but it's like, now it's cloudy and rainy today. But anyway, so so I, I say, fine, if that happens, that happens. I have no attachment to it, you know? Yeah. I don't care if it blows up or it stays exactly the same for the rest of my life. I don't care. I am yeah. happy either way because I'm out of the hamster wheel life. I'm doing stuff like this all day long. And yeah. my day goes like that. And I feel like it's really creative and productive and it is and, and satisfying. And you get a lot of appreciation back for it and yeah. you know, nice comments and stuff. So so whatever will happen, okay. If it does, we'll be in a different exploration or a different part of this exploration. Yeah. And, but right now I'm just going to enjoy the hell out of what I'm doing now. 
and let it go. Great attitude. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I'm in the same thing. I'm yeah. Sorry. Well, that's alignment there. That's looking at things from, do you meditate? I do. I used to, I have gone through, for the past 20 years, I've gone through stages where I can't leave the house and, unless I've meditated. Mm. And now I'm in a phase of, it's a chore, so I don't do it. Mm, yeah. um, but there are times that I feel nudged to do it, and then I'll do it, and then it's fabulous experience. So it's, it's in and out for me. Because yeah. I've taken it, I think I've taken it to a different level of understanding that I can... I can meditate. My I consider my meditation with them, my conversations with them that are only in my head now, um, just just them us chatting or them telling me something. Um, but if I if I because I lay down with headphones to meditate, and if in the first five minutes I'm uncomfortable, I stop. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm yeah. very if I if it doesn't feel right to me, I do something else. Um, Joshua has written. 10 guided meditations and a wonderful person kyla hinton has done the you know recording of it in her voice yeah. and she put the music to it and they're incredible wonderful. and that's the only meditation i listen to you know and their affirmations and uh you know they'll be on different subjects like abundance and clarity and things like that and they're on insight timer and amazon music and things like that so they're okay. available everywhere that's the thing that changed my life the most. I, and I had this inspiration to meditate that was so strong and I kept resisting it and resisting and resisting it. And then once I started meditating in 2013, then everything came flowing from that. And I really think this is part of this key is to, is to be the, learn that you're the observer of the thought, not the manufacturer of the thought. Right. And that you attract and receive thought and then you, you judge the thoughts right? and you have thoughts that you are resistant to and that causes you to go out of alignment. You have the thoughts that you are, that you judge as good in reality. The thoughts are what nothing, you know? Um, right. And then, and then in getting deeper on that, you might notice in the beginning when you're meditating that you're in this fear based consciousness. So all the thoughts are crappy thoughts. And so, the, the skill to allow those thoughts to leave and to have moments of no thought is good. But eventually you'll start linking up to source consciousness and receive inspiration. Right. And when that happens, and maybe that takes a while to happen, but when that happens, I think then you can play with those thoughts and you can enjoy um, bouncing around in those thoughts and seeing where they go and, and entertaining yeah. them. And then, it's all about getting into that realization that there are these two streams and which one are you in, you know? Right. And That's if you right. can just link into this one more often and see everything is good and right and everything is coming to you at the right timing and receive the inspiration and then just go with the flow of that. That's right. But, uh, you know, it's, right. and, and we also do this thing called a daily spiritual practice too. So we have, so Joshua wrote a diet book, and this is sort of a trick, you know. The diet book was really about, you know, the body and understanding that you're unique and that the only way to en enhance any part of the body is the absolute acceptance of what it is right now right. without wanting anything to be different. And right. then you'll be guided to beneficial behaviors and foods and stuff like that. Right. The, there's an accompanying book to that called The Playbook, and the playbook is this daily spiritual practice where you do affirmations and appreciation and set your intentions and think about what you're inspired to do and that sort of thing. And the combination of the meditation and this daily spiritual practice, which only takes half an hour a day, it really sets you up to be focused on positive things or a higher perspective or yeah. focused on the good. And if you imagine a life where we're spending eight hours sleeping, two, three hours eating, uh, eight hours working, you know, and then the rest watching TV or having fun, none of it is spiritual. Right. And so it seems as spiritual beings, we need to, or be beneficial to incorporate at least half an hour a day or some little time as a spiritual practice every single day. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. I just met, and do you, are you have to go anywhere? Because we're already over an hour here. No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> go for as long as you want. Okay, yeah. good. So I, I met a guy named Matt Cohn, and he's introduced by a friend, and he's a really interesting guy. He disconnected from everything about seven, eight years ago. He's Matt, did you say Matt Cohn? Cohn. How do you, how are you spelling that? C-O-N-E, not Matt Cohn. Okay, it's not right. that guy. Okay, right. okay. So he uh, left his corporate gig, he got divorced, and he said, I'm not doing this anymore. And he started just seeking out different Good for him, I love stuff. him. Going to Nepal, going, now he's in Hawaii working with these things. He went to this thing called Mystery School. He's, and all he does is just bum around. And he actually, uh, he's actually created this idea of abundance and he's made this abundance program and he gave a TED talk on it. Uh, and so it's very interesting, but this guy is like, and he's into, you know, psychedelics and ayahuasca, which is another form of the spirituality, by the way, yep. that, that is, there's, it's part of this, it's not really necessary, but it's part of the spiritual sure, awakening for a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. And he's just living this life. I've never met anyone like him, you know, just disconnected <laughs> from everything and it's just, you know, living as a traveler and just going around the world to these different things. Wow. Yeah. That sounds fabulous to me. It <laughs> Does it? Like, it sounds sort of scary to me. Well, it's a little scary, yeah, and I don't know that I would do it, but I, yeah. I admire that uninhibited spirit, you know, and you know just, he's got a huge purpose then, you know. He's, yeah. he's talking about stuff people want to hear about. But he does not want to be a teacher. He already is a teacher. I know. <laughs> I'm going to have a podcast with him tomorrow, but it's like, oh, wow, it's cool. like oh, you know, I, all these conversations I'm having with him, he's going, I'm just going there with the flow and seeing what's out there and sucking it all up. And, you know, he's I'm a like, huge teacher. Aren't you obviously, don't you want to teach this stuff? And he's like, he's oh. a huge, he doesn't have to be labeled a teacher. He's a right. huge teacher who's going on your podcast. Right. You know, exactly. and he's, he's so got this abundance thing or whatever. He's already doing it. He just doesn't want to admit it. <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> oh, right. <thank> you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow, good. that's fabulous. That's all fabulous. right. So tell everyone where they can find you. Oh, uh, the teachings of Joseph. Jo Joseph with an F, by the way. Uh -huh. J O S E F. Teachings of Joseph .com. I am getting. I am right in the middle of renegotiating a new website. I know it's very outdated, and um, so I'm going to be um, revamping that. And on Instagram, the teachings of Joseph. And on Facebook, of course, I've left that kind of alone, but we're on there. Teachings yeah. of Joseph. Do you have a Facebook um, group? I do not. No, I'm not. Yeah, a, start I'm a not group. A Facebook fan. I don't like it. I don't like. <laughs> I don't like any of it. I don't like any of it. And and that's a you know. I know I have to change that perspective. It just has not been friendly to me. So um, so I have my attitude with it. But uh, it will come around when I find somebody that will do that 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 can do that stuff. Then I'm right. all about it. Yeah. yeah. I just don't. I don't understand it. You know what? I learned all that stuff when I was in my 20s, and all computers came out. And I'm a, I'm a huge, you know, computer person, but enough already, you know, it's enough. Let somebody else do it. So yeah. And I'm on Amazon. The books are on Amazon and um, that's it. Yeah. Search Cindy Edison. Yeah. And uh, how do you make your quotes? Cause I love the format of your quotes. Some of them are from, well, I do all my own stuff. I, you know, my advertising background, I was a creative and a writer uh, and stuff, but so I do all my own stuff, but um, the quotes, some of them come from, if you're talking about content, some of them are from uh, taken out of the uh, morning conversations I have with them. Or if I'm sitting out on my balcony and they're talking to me about something, I go, Oh, that's a great one. And I go and write it down. Yeah. You know, so they're very sporadic. That's why there's, there, you'll see a lull sometimes, you know, and some, I've, I've got probably 2000 on there that I'm sharing. So I where'd, just go through them. Where'd you grow up? Catskill Mountains of New York, oh, upstate New York. I was going to say that, you know. Yeah. 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 Um, and where'd you go to school? Catskill Mountains of New York. Ah. <laughs> the whole thing down there. Yeah. Came down here for a year, but it just wasn't the same. So I ended up going back. That was, you, uh, that was so long ago. How'd you get into advertising? I uh, actually see this is one of those events back when I was uh, when I got out of school I hightailed it to Florida with a couple girls I was working with we just packed our cars one night and said we're moving to Florida so I went down there and I was waitressing where and, where did uh, you live 
and uh, went to Tampa and went down to North, uh, North Miami Beach, okay. Hollywood, Florida, lived yeah. a couple places, um, and North Miami Bay, um, lived down there. And I was actually trying to help a friend get a job. And we were sitting in a diner one morning, and I was reading the, the one ads for her, and I saw this advertise it jumped out at me like it was the biggest thing on the whole paper and I had gone to school for commercial art and photography so I had that kind of creative I've always been that way but um and it said receptionist for small ad agency so I called up from the diner I was very it was very moved I mean it was very inspired I had no idea what that meant at the time I just did it right and I went that day in flip-flops and a mini skirt that mini jean skirt that I had on and he hired me on the spot and he taught me I was with him for three and a half years before I moved back to Atlanta and he was my, uh, he was fabulous. And he taught me everything there was about creative advertising back in the good old days. Wow. You know, that was back in the, in the late seventies, early eighties. Yeah. Um, he was fabulous. And I, and I stuck to it from then and then just came to Atlanta, worked for a few agencies here and ultimately on the corporate side of ad director and stuff like that. So it was a, a wonderful, wonderful, uh, but not anymore. It's not like that anymore. Yeah. So. My uh, major was marketing in college. Oh, see? Yeah. <laughs> but then I, I didn't want to uh, like work for an ad company or anything. And then my account is Charmin, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, you'd be surprised. We had so much fun. I worked on some pretty good accounts and I yeah. had so much fun. The late nights, the blue skies. And back then, you know, we were smoking in our offices and three hour drinking lunches. It was mad men all over the place. Right. <laughs> really fun. It was really fun. Wow. So great. I miss that. But I, so I do my own stuff to keep a handle on that. So. Awesome. Okay. So uh, let's do this again sometime. This was really I fun. Hope so. Yeah. I welcome that anytime. It's been wonderful. Thank you so yeah. much. For awesome. This. Cool. And I'll, and uh, so say goodbye to everyone. Bye, everybody. Goodbye, Thank everyone. Choose, choose, choose.